to see the best Lanky Box real life story time videos ever. We reveal how Roblox ruined our lives, share why Lanky Box was sent to jail, and we even show you how Lanky Box almost died. Keep watching for a bonus story video at the end. Let's go. We're going to be telling some crazy stories about how we went to jail. <laughs> Now these are gonna be stories about when we got in a lot of trouble. Oh, now, man. I'm a star. So when I was growing up, when I was like five years old, I loved video games. Uh -huh. However, my parents did not want me playing them. They were like, we would rather you play outside with friends. So they didn't even allow me to have video. <laughs> what? Outside with friends? <laughs> so you just didn't do anything, did you? Uh, no. Everybody knows you ain't got no friends. <laughs> no, that's now. Oh. Back then I had friends. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Basically, my parents were like, we don't want you playing video games. We're not going to buy you anything. But I really wanted to play video games. Okay. So my first ever video game console was a Game Boy Color. Now, I'm in fifth grade. Yeah. And my parents, I was like, please, 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 can I have some video games? They were like, okay. Oh. We're going to give you a Nintendo GameCube. That's pretty good. Now, my mind was literally blown. But they were like, okay, here's a Nintendo GameCube. Here's like Super Smash Brothers. Here's some Mario games. But uh -huh. you can only play this one hour a week. Uh, what? <laughs> That's it. One hour. Literally. I thought you were gonna say one hour a day. No. A week. No. They were like, you have to tell us when you want to play, and we'll like let you for an hour, and then that's it. You cannot play. Dude, it. your parents are so sad. <laughs> I would be like, if you came in and said, Justin, I'm gonna give you this tray of cookies. <laughs> you can have one nibble per year. <laughs> that is that is cruel. So I literally plan out like, okay, I want to play Mario for this like 15 minutes, like maybe like Super Smash Brothers for like 30 minutes. I would plan out like weeks in advance when I'm going to use that hour. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, my parents were very, very strict, obviously, about me playing video games, but they were also very strict about what type of games I could play. Uh -huh. It had to be rated E. Oh. Like, they didn't want any type of violent games <laughs> going into my brain. Yeah, true. And so, I was having a friend over once, and he was like, oh, uh, do you want to play some video games? I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, oh, let's play Call of Duty. For those of you that don't know, Call of Duty is a, definitely a more violent game. Sure. Right? And my parents would not allow me to play yeah, that. Yeah. And so he was like, oh, I want to play Call of Duty. I'm like, oh, I don't own that. Like, my mom won't let me play that game. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, uh, okay, I'm just going to go home then. <laughs> like, he literally was like, I only want to play Call of Duty. And if we're not going to play that, I'm just going to leave. Dude, he straight up used you. Yeah. Dang. Dude, I literally felt so sad. I was like, well, I can't play Call of Duty. Like, do you want to play, like, Pokemon or something? And he was like, nah, nope, I'm just going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> After my friend left, I asked my mom, I don't know why I even thought this was an I a good idea, but I was like, Mom, can I please get Call of Duty? And she was like, no, obviously not. I'm not going to let you play these violent games. Wow. So I was like, wait a minute. I bet there are online games that are similar to Call of Duty. So I went to my computer. I searched like free shooting games. <laughs> I clicked on the first one. I created an account. I started to play it. And the game was like super low quality. Oh, a yeah. bunch of like pop-ups yeah, appeared. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure my computer got a virus. <laughs> 10,000 pop-ups appear. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna close out of this. Like, this is a bad idea. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Like, yeah. okay, I still don't have Call of Duty and now I think my computer has a virus. Yeah. Great. Yeah. The next day comes, I go to school. My friend's like, hey, did you get Call of Duty? I was like, no, man, like I tried, but I, <laughs> it's not gonna work. The school day ends. My mom comes to pick me up from school. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, what's up, mom? Uh-huh. Silence. Huh? Now, normally on my way home from school, me and my mom talk, oh, how was your day? Whatever. <laughs> Silence. You gotta catch up with your only friend. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I can tell something's off. I was like, hey, how's your day? Nothing. Just wow. real tense. So the whole way home, I'm like, what's going on? We make it home. She opens the garage door, pulls oh. in the car. I literally cannot make this up. She was sitting there. Yeah. I was like, should we get out of the car? Just sitting there. And she was like, so Adam. Do you feel guilty about anything? <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, huh? And then she was like, I asked you a question. Is there anything that what? you feel guilty about? I was like, no. Uh, uh, uh. And she was like, 
I got an email today from a violent video game site saying you tried to create an account there to play their game. Oh, man. And she was like, oh, man. Were you playing violent video games? And my mom was like, I can't believe you lied to me. Wow. If you keep up this bad behavior, you could go to jail if you keep doing this. And you did go to jail, didn't you? No. Are you sure? Luckily, I did not go to jail. However, I felt like I was in jail. Like the next two weeks, I was in so much trouble. That was the most trouble I ever got in as a kid. Now, you got in trouble with your mom. <laughs> I got in trouble with the law. Yeah, no way. You already know. Back in middle school, me and my good friend, James, had a ploy, and there was this, like, scary movie coming out in, like, a week, and we were like, oh, man, we will be the coolest kids at school if we got to go see this scary movie and then we could come back to school and tell all the other kids like, oh, dude, we saw this crazy movie. So it was like rated R. Like it they don't let people under the age of a certain amount go in. No, of course it's rated R. It oh. was rated like super R. Oh. A super scary movie. So you were not going to be allowed to get in. No, there's no way. We were saying, how can we get into this movie and watch it before everybody else? Uh-huh. Because, I mean, the age difference was huge. Like there's no way we we're allowed to get in. And we look like toddlers. <laughs> Okay, we were sitting at lunch, you know, eating some sandwiches, and we had a scheme. We said, okay, what if we go to the movies together, and we buy a ticket to like a G-rated movie, and then we do the good old switcheroo, <laughs> and we walk into the R-rated movie and watch it. We decide, okay, it's gonna be lit. We're gonna do that this Friday night. James's mom drives us to the theater, you know, we're in the back seat eating more sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, we get dropped off. James's mom says, all right guys, time to leave, time to go go enjoy your Disney movie. Uh -huh. She thought we we're gonna go watch a Disney movie. Uh -huh. We fooled her. Uh -huh. And we say, all right, thank you, appreciate it. We hop out as we're hopping out. She goes, wait a minute. You guys are gonna go see a Disney movie. James's little sister, who who was literally like eight, a little little kid. She was like, I want to see the Disney movie. Oh no! And the no. mom's like, Okay, I'll just take her with you. No, no. problem. I was like, Oh, no problem, no problem. Let's just take her with us. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> so we uh, give us three tickets to the new Disney movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get them. We walk straight into the theater, and then this is the moment of truth. I see the Disney movie that we bought the tickets for on uh -huh. one side. Uh huh. And then I see the super violent R-rated <laughs> horror movie on the other side. I say, Justy, this right here is a defining moment in your life. What you do right now will affect you. Your police record, <laughs> So you know what I did? I walked straight to that R-rated no! movie. <laughs> As we were sitting there, the lights get dimmer. I'm like, oh, man, we pulled it off, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> and then some trailers start playing. So now, you know, if you go to a G-rated movie, the trailers they play are similar to the movie you're about to watch. Like, yeah. if you watch a Disney movie, they're going to play you other, like, Disney trailers. We were in an R-rated horror movie, so the trailers that started to play were very scary and violent. Uh -huh. So I'm sitting there, getting a little <laughs> bit nervous, because I'm already terrified of the trailers. I look around. Out of the corner of my eye, I see that there's one of those movie theater people with, like, the wand, like, yeah. the glowing wand, you know, yeah. like the flashlight. And they're going through and checking everybody's ticket. So I, Dude. <laughs> as the people are about halfway up the theater and they're getting close to us, well, the movie actually starts. At the very start of the movie, this person jumps out like in a mask and attacks somebody. And then immediately, James's little sister, who has only now caught wind of what has transpired, uh -huh. starts to cry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She starts sobbing in the theater. Okay, so everybody's like, what? How did these little toddlers get in this movie theater? So we <laughs> grab the stats, grab the soda, I'm out. We book it straight out the theater. Uh huh. The attendants are coming after us with their flashlights. <laughs> we run straight into the G-rated movie. The attendants catch up to us. They say, uh, did I see you kids just leave an R-rated movie? I said, no, you did not. I'm just here to watch a G-rated movie. And me and James had to sit there and watch the entire movie. <laughs> so nothing bad happened? Something terrible almost happened, Adam. What? I almost dropped my popcorn. <laughs> now, Adam, today I'm going to be telling a very serious story about how I was in a relationship and how 
Now Roblox <laughs> ruined that relationship. I would be married right now if it wasn't for Roblox. <laughs> Came Dude, in and ruined Roblox my life. blocked your love life. <laughs> Roblox! <laughs> I will start off this story by saying this happened to me early on in high school, okay? As I mentioned in our first job animation, I used to be a lifeguard because I was a swimmer, right? Okay? So in high school, I was on the team, you know? I was on the swim team, you know, acting all cool and stuff. I was on track to become the captain of the team. I was I was fast, I was I was friendly, people liked me, uh -huh. okay? I looked real nice in that speedo, <laughs> okay? I had career aspirations. I'm gonna be the captain of the team. When I'm a senior, it's gonna be great. Uh-huh. But there was one thing holding me back. <laughs> Would you like to guess what it is? Roblox. Roblox. <laughs> and I'll tell you how. I have an addictive personality. Okay, like if I if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna go all in. You know, like if it, if there's a box of donuts in front of me, <laughs> you're not I'm gonna, gonna have just one. I'm eating all of them <laughs> for sure. So I was swimming, I was going to school, but when I got home, I would still play video games. Uh -huh. I was not playing Roblox at the beginning. Okay? okay. Now everything changed when at one swim meet. So at the swim meets, you compete as a school against another school, right? Right. At one meet, I met this girl. My friend introduced me to her friend who went to a different school, and this girl's name was Maddie. Was Maddie like on the other school swim team? Yeah, she was oh. a swim team. Yeah. I ended up dating Maddie. Now, I'm not gonna get into how that happened because that is irrelevant. The whole story takes place after. Now, Maddie was a very nice girl, a very fast swimmer, a very good student. The problem, however, was, as I said, this happened at the beginning of high school. So back then, I'm not able to drive. Okay, right. like freshman in high school, you don't know how to drive. So Maddie went to a different school than me. So that's the problem, because I'm not gonna see her all the time. Right, you, know you know only I mean? normally get to see her on like the weekends or something. So I'm not even then, because how are we gonna meet up? Like take a bus or walk or something? It was basically a long distance relationship, <laughs> even though she's like two miles away. <laughs> right. Okay, we had to keep coming up with activities to do to like keep in touch. Right. You know, because otherwise like you like FaceTime somebody is kind of like, how's your day? Right, right, like, right. Pretty good. You got to find an activity that you guys can do together, but doesn't require both of you to be together. Exactly. I guess what that activity <laughs> was, Adam. I'll give you one guess. So Maddie had a little brother named Sam. Now Sam was a very, very smart kid. I, I like straight up. He was actually super smart. I, I still remember his parents and I will get into his parents in a second. His parents like gave him a small amount of money and he like invested it in stocks and he made them a bunch of money. And this kid's in middle school? Kid, yeah, he's like, a little, he's like a kid. That's where I got all my stonk training <laughs> tips. <laughs> Maddie and Sam's parents were very well, I, I didn't interact with her dad very much, but their mom was very, very strict. Like, she was always, like, watching over them and just, like, strict in general as a parent, which was good. She was right. trying to keep Maddie and Sam on the path to success. To give you an example of how controlling this mom was, and not in a bad way, I remember Maddie told me one time, every time it was cold, like the winter, she had to, like, huddle under all these blankets because her mom wouldn't let her turn on the heat in the house. Because her mom was like, you gotta save money. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, she's like one of those moms. Oh, like, that's fine. Like, wow. respect, you know? But it, that was the kind of mom she was. Now, remember that. That's gonna come back later. Okay. okay. So I was hanging out with Maddie, and one day she tells me, hey, my little brother plays this game online with his friends. It's called Roblox. Maybe we could all play together, and that'll give us a reason to, like, chat and hang out. Right. I was like, that's genius. Had you played Roblox before no, this point? No, I never played Roblox before that point. Okay. I was like, I'll make it account. Why not? Okay? It was actually perfect, because we could play Roblox, and we could have, like, Skype calls at the same time times so yeah. like voice chat it was sick yeah okay. now i got into roblox because of that but like i said <laughs> I have an addictive personality! <laughs> so as soon as I started playing Roblox and these other games that like Sam and Maddie introduced me to, I was hooked. I was like, dude, <laughs> forget being captain of the team. I'm trying to be captain of Roblox. <laughs> so, so for real, like me and Maddie would play together and like all the time her little brother Sam would join us. So right? it was like three of us. Yeah. And it was really fun. Like Sam introduced me to a bunch of games in Roblox, but also games in general. So like the games that we really liked were the social ones, because obviously that allows me and Maddie to chat. Uh -huh. But it was also like these games you could like farm levels like basically the more time you spent in the game doing like very menial tasks the more levels you got in the game and then like you look super cool compared to everybody else oh, because okay. you have like the most level. So I, I do want to say everything up until this point was going great. I was spending time with Maddie. It was great. Okay. The relationship was going well. Everything was going well. I was like this is sick. However, 
the addiction, the Roblox addiction kicked in. And me and Sam said, we gotta be the top. We gotta be the best. We gotta get to the top of the leaderboards. Yeah. We gotta be number one in the world at these games. So we figured, okay, we don't have much time to play. How can we level up? Uh-huh. Sam, being as smart as he was, was like, I got an idea. He was like, why don't you give me your computer? I had a laptop. Uh -huh. He's like, give me your computer. I'll take my computer. I will do some computer wizardry that will allow us to basically move the characters and farm levels even when we're at school. So it's like you're cheating. That's not cheating. <laughs> now I will say I do not endorse that. Okay, I don't endorse that. Play fair and square. Uh huh. In Sam and Maddie's house, they had like this like dark basement that apparently nobody ever went into. He was like, dude, this is genius. I will turn on my computer. I'll take your laptop. I'll take Maddie's laptop. I'll take everything. I'll put it in the basement where no one ever goes. I'll just leave them running. All day and like we'll just farm levels just and leveling up all yeah, the just time leveling up okay. I was like dude this kid is an actual genius so everything's going well and I was like wow I am on top of the world okay I got a relationship going well I'm on my way to become a swim team you're captain. leveling up your love life yeah. your Roblox yeah. life your school life everything's leveling up most importantly I'm becoming great in Roblox <laughs> that was the most important thing but I will say this Adam it was a slippery slope it really was. I actually started to care less about school because I was invested so much in these games. I actually started slacking off at swim practice. I was just thinking like, how am I gonna get, can I borrow more computers to like level like more accounts? How do we do this? Uh huh. Right? I was like chatting with Sam all the time. Like, okay, how are we gonna do this like over Facebook? How are we gonna level up more? How are we gonna get to the top? So everything, everything did start to kind of decline. At a certain point in the relationship, Maddie started being like, you're talking to my little brother more than you talk to me. <laughs> I was like, I got a business to run here. That's how I sound now. <laughs> you talk to chicken more than you talk to me. So I started slack off in school. I started not try at swim practice. My career was on the line. My relationship with Maddie started to not go so well. It wasn't the best. And then I heard that Sam started like trying less hard in school. Sam had always been like a perfect straight A kid. Now he was so invested in Roblox and these other games we're playing outside of Roblox. He like couldn't focus in school. Oh no. All of this story basically culminates in this one day. One fateful day. So one day on a weekend, I actually do get the chance to go see Maddie in person. Uh-huh. Okay? Now I'm there and she's getting dropped off by her mom, who again, I've heard of, is like very, very strict. Uh-huh. So you know, I'm there, I'm chilling, I'm just waiting to go hang out with her. And a car pulls up and Maddie hops out, her mom hops out and her mom says, oh, so you, are this Justy character? <laughs> I say, yeah, 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 yeah. And she looks at me and she goes, you are a bad influence. I don't want you dating Maddie anymore and don't play any more games with Sam. Are you kidding? She no way. Out. She found out the whole ploy and she realized I was responsible for Sam not trying very hard in school. Do you want to know how she found out about our whole ploy? How? Maddie's mom literally looked at her electric bill and it had gone up because we had so many computers running in the basement. Really? Yeah. That's actually how she figured it out. She was like, okay, something's up here. The electricity bill is going through the roof. I don't know why. And apparently she had wandered into the basement and found like 40 computers running <laughs> robots at the same time. I wonder what, what went through her head when she found that. Just Dude. like a bunch of characters in Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> so she literally found our stash of computers. Now, again, it was Roblox and a bunch of other games as well. Uh -huh. But she was like, my son, Sam, the, the genius kid, the prodigy child, making us money with his stonks. This kid is getting distracted by these games. She must have sat him down and said, who put you up to this? And then he said, it was me. <laughs> and so at that point, I realized, Justy, Justy, <laughs> what are you doing? Get your life back in order. I had lost the relationship. Because Wait, her mom made you guys break up? She was like, I don't want you spending more time with Maddie or Sam. You're a bad influence. And I was, I'm gonna be honest. I was so invested in those games. I had caused all these problems. Wow. It was really my fault. I said, Justy, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, Justy, you're gonna try hard again in school. You are going to try again on the swim team. You're gonna be better to people you're in relationships with. You're not gonna neglect them for video games. And, now, and then I turned my life around. I gave up Roblox. No, we play Roblox like all the time together. I 
I'm still a dad! <laughs> Today, Adam, I'm going to tell you a story all about how I almost died! Wait, what? This is a totally true story about how I literally almost died one day. Wow, I'm excited to hear it. Now, this story takes place when I was in the third grade. Adam, do you remember much about when you were in third grade? Oh, man, I was probably pretty cringy back then. We still are now! <laughs> Okay, third grade is a real awkward time. You know, I didn't really have that many friends at school, but I did have friends that lived on the same street as me. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, your neighborhood friends. Yeah, so I wasn't popular at school, but I had neighborhood friends, right? So when I was in third grade, it was all the rage. You know, everyone was talking about one thing and one thing only. Uh, scooters. <laughs> did you have a scooter when you were growing up? Yeah, of course I had a scooter. Okay, well, scooters, okay, they were all the rage. Everyone wanted a scooter. I wanted a scooter, but I couldn't get a scooter, bro. My parents would not get me a scooter, you know? I couldn't get one. So I had to turn to one thing and one thing only to get my scooter. Santa Claus! Oh, you were gonna ask for a scooter for Christmas? I asked for a scooter for Christmas so many times that year. I'm pretty sure Santa heard me all the way to the North Pole. And so I was at school, you know, everyone else had scooters, okay? I didn't have a scooter. I was just alone playing, you know, four square, you know, by myself. You know what I mean? So it was like more of one square. It was, oh yeah, me, I'm a square. <laughs> okay? I was playing four square by myself. I didn't have any friends, okay? And I was just thinking all day, every day, how can I get a scooter? I, once I get a scooter, I'm gonna be so cool, bro. I'm gonna be <laughs> all over the place on my scooter. I was gonna be sick. I was waiting, I was waiting, and then Thank goodness, Santa Claus, I waited a whole year. Santa Claus really came through with the jingle bells, jingle bells, and he dropped off a scooter! Wow! It was the greatest Christmas ever, Adam. I literally waited an entire year to get a scooter. Did you cry tears of happiness? I did not. I don't, I don't cry! Uh, uh, you know, I'm real tough. Uh, I don't cry, but it was one of the happiest days of my life. I literally waited an entire year to get a scooter. I couldn't just ask for it and get it right away. I had to wait till Christmas. Oh. And it was a nice scooter. I was real happy, real thankful about it. It was real shiny, you know, brand new scooter. Uh, it had these awesome wheels that were see-through, man. I thought it was the coolest thing ever, man. Wow. So when you went back to school, did everyone think you were super cool? No. Still no. Okay. <laughs> Nobody thought I was cool. But that's okay. Do you remember what color your scooter was, Adam? Mine was a silver scooter with red wheels. Yeah, man. Yeah. I had the silver with the see-through wheels, man. Ooh. Those are limited edition, you know what I mean? Wow. Now, anyways, so I had the scooter, and no, it did not make me cooler at school, but it made me cool with my neighborhood friends, you know, because I would ride it up and down the street. All the kids would be like, oh, man, look at the scooter, bro. Wow. Look at the scooter. Now, the other kids on the street, once they saw me have a scooter, they just asked their parents for scooters, and they had scooters the next day. <gasps> okay, so we all had scooters, you know, scooter squad. <laughs> scooter squad. <laughs> you know what I mean? We were zooming. We were zooming up and down the street. We were having fun. So I got a scooter right here, and guys, we were kind of like learning tricks, like me and my neighborhood friends, and one of the first tricks we learned how to do was how to jump off a curb on a scooter, which is actually really hard to do, you know what I mean? Yeah, can you even do them now? Oh, I can do it. This was just like the scooter I had in this story, guys. This is just like the scooter I got in third grade. Check this out, bro. You're not gonna wipe out? I'm not gonna wipe out, dude. Check this out. Okay, I hope you look cool. Check it out. Guys, even jumping off a curb is pretty dangerous with a two-wheel scooter, okay? So always be careful. Adam, yeah, do you have a scooter now? I've seen it. It's one of those with three wheels. Yeah, so I don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now this scooter, out. now we were having fun, we were jumping off curves, but you know, quickly, we were thinking, man, we gotta get more extreme. We gotta become daredevils, you know what I mean? Oh no. So we were thinking, man, how can we make scootering more extreme? And one of the kids who lived on my street, his parents, actually like his dad was able to like build a ramp out of wood, bro. Whoa, like a jump? Yeah, like a ramp. So it was like two triangles back to back and like you go up one side and you get some airtime and you go down the other side. Bro. Oh, I gotcha. Now, his dad spent quite a while in his garage and because we all lived on the same street, we could see him working on it. He'd work on it every day, you know, every day in the afternoon. He'd be, you know, hammering stuff, sawing the wood and we were real excited, okay? And then the big day came when the ramp was finished, okay? Everybody pulled up, 
looked at it and it wasn't that high. It was maybe like a foot jump or something. Oh. But all of a sudden, everybody started sweating. <laughs> everybody starts so, uh, sweating. No one wants to go first because no one wants to fall and look dumb. Right, you know right, I mean? right. And, and it, it's a little bit scary because it's a bigger jump than off a curb. I'm thinking, you know what I mean? It's the, hey, it's time for me to glow up. <laughs> I'm just the, I got to prove I'm super cool, super brave. I'm going to go first, bro. Wow. So in your head, you're probably thinking if you land some super cool big jump and do a trick, you're going to be the coolest kid in your neighborhood. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Now, I, I, I did not do a trick. I just wanted to make it across the jump and not oof. oof. Just got not it. oof right away. Okay. So I, 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 I was scared, but I decided I got to push past my fear. I got to, I got to prove I'm cool, bro. Now, 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 remember this. This is an important lesson for later, guys. Hey, don't do stuff that's potentially dangerous just to try to impress people. It's not worth it. Right. It's not worth it, Adam. Yeah. Okay. Now, because look at us now. Still no one thinks we're that's cool. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> We've been doing it for years. It's not working. Okay. Now, so I, I get to the end of the street. I'm sweating a little bit. Okay. Everybody's watching me. They say, is he really going to go first? I start pedaling. I'm pedaling. I'm pedaling. I'm pedaling. I'm zooming. I'm zooming. I'm zooming. And then I hit the ramp. Ah! And I'm flying. Ah! And then I land on the other side. Woo! Wow, it worked. Everybody goes crazy. Oh, Justin, you're so cool. Oh, oh. <laughs> everybody goes crazy. Now, that was actually a pretty cool incident because everybody, you know, was scared. But because I had bravery, everyone else felt brave. And then everyone else could do it. Because, yeah, guys, the jump looked a lot worse than it really was. Oh. Okay. So that was great. And then we spent a whole summer just going up and down that ramp. Like, I remember that was one of the greatest summers ever. We would just go up and down that ramp about 10 hours a day, bro. Well, that it was sounds great. fun. It was great. Now, very quickly, once again, you know, we got bored, dude. We got bored of going off the curb. Then we got scared of going up the ramp. But then once we did it, we got bored. We said, we got to find some more extreme thrills. Uh -huh. So what did you guys do? <laughs> we need the thrills to pay the bills. <laughs> okay. So one day, we're out scootering. We're exploring the neighborhood. And we found a new park that no one had ever been to before. Okay? Oh. Now, this is pretty far from our street that we're used to. So we didn't know the park at all. We had no idea what it was like. And we were just exploring. You know, we are having fun on the swings, whatever. We pulled up on the scooters. We are having fun. And then we decided to go off-roading. <gasps> okay, this is where the story takes a... A dramatic and dangerous turn, bro. And so you're still on your scooters here? We're on our scooters. We're going in the back trails, like off the, you know what I mean? Like there's like a park, there's a playground, but then there's like trails around it. Yeah, that's kind of scary. We were going around the back trails because we we're exploring. Now guys, we, this was unfamiliar territory. We did not know where we were, but we were together, you know, we were going up and down the hills and then we got to the top of a super big hill, bro. It was, it was huge. I'm not even kidding. It would still be a big hill even now today. We got to the top of the hill and there is one lonely little road that goes all the way down the hill. Oh. And one of the kids, I'll never forget, looks at us and goes, hey, I bet, I bet, I bet one of you guys won't go down the hill on your scooter. <gasps> oh, no. Uh, tell me you didn't take that bet. Oh, bruh. Now, okay. I got to give some more. I got to paint a picture. First off, it was raining this day. Okay. So it was real wet everywhere. Okay. The road is real wet. And it was muddy. This little trail was super muddy. Okay. It was just covered in mud. Okay. So we're all looking at each other thinking, hmm. I don't want to go down this hill because I might oof for real. Yeah, you might fall and slip in the mud. And I might, I might oof. It might, this might be it. Yeah. But you know what? I, 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 I was, I was so excited that I had gone first across the ramp. I decided I, I gotta be the first one to do this. Wow, you're so brave. Nah, nah. I wasn't, Adam. I was being dumb. <gasps> Wait, what happened? It was a mistake, bro. Because this is where I realized there was an inner voice saying, nah, Justy, this this not like the ramp. Uh, you go down this hill, you might never come back. Wow, it's like there's an angel and a demon on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was, I wanted to be cool, man. Now, remember what I said earlier? You can't just do stuff to impress other people. Uh, right? Okay. I, I really knew I shouldn't have done this, guys. This hill was big. I'm talking big. I'm talking Adam probably wouldn't want to go up the hill now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was a big hill, and I was scared, but I was like, I just want to look cool. So I said, you know what? Hey, I'll do it. 
I'll do it. So I get to the top of the hill and everyone else says, we're gonna walk our scooters down to the bottom. We'll meet you at the bottom. So no one else was brave? No, well, I mean, they wanted to see me go down the bottom. Oh. Right at the bottom, okay? So I was there alone at the top of the hill at a real crossroads in my life. On one hand, there is life, okay? I could grow old, you know? Be alone, uh, uh, make videos on YouTube. <laughs> and on the other side, I could go down this hill and oof. <gasps> you might actually I'm oof. I might oof, bro, but I, I, I thought, you know, I just want to look cool. I, was, I wasn't using my common sense. I should have just walked down that hill, really. Wow. But I said, hey, it's too late now. I'm gonna zoom zoom. So I backed up, I started pedaling, I started pedaling, and then I took off. I, I, I went so fast down that hill. So I, I didn't even have time to think. I was, <laughs> I was probably about 100 miles down that hill, Adam. Whoa, wait, what happened? I will never forget in my life, ever. I'll never forget the look on one of these kids' faces. I was zipped past everybody so fast, I looked at this one kid, right, who was watching me, and he looked like he saw a ghost, bro. <laughs> he looked at, the way he looked at me, he said, you gone oof. <laughs> you oofed right now. I was so scared, and I couldn't stop the scooter. You know how scooters have like a break? Yeah. It obviously was doing nothing, because I was going down just a straight hill, in the mud, in the rain, there was no stopping this scooter. Yeah, because it was probably the wheels were wet, so the brake didn't work. I said, this is it, Adam. I'm going to oof, bro. Oh, no. And I looked up, and I remember at the bottom of the hill, there was like this part, like the hill, the path just cut off. It was a cliff on the other side, bro. And it was just going to go to the sky? It was going to a cliff, bro. I was gonna oof. I accepted in that moment. This might be it. Oh. This might be the end of Justy Cromies as it is. So you're flying down this hill about to go off a cliff and then what happened? I made a last second decision. I said this. I can't end it all right here. I gotta jump off. I gotta bail, bro. <gasps> I bailed. I jumped off. Now, guys, this was actually super dangerous. This is why you should never do anything like this in your life. I scraped up. Oh, both my arms and my legs super bad because I jumped off a scooter going about 100 miles an hour down a hill. Yeah. But it was my only chance. It was my only choice. And the scooter, true story, guys. This is a true story. The scooter went flying off that cliff. It went flying off the cliff. And I listened for about five seconds, didn't hear anything. And then I heard a big crash, bro. Wow. It fell about 900 feet to the bottom of a pit, bro. You actually could have oofed. I almost oofed, bro. This is a real story, guys. Now, hey, me and my friends, we got up. I was pretty injured. My friends helped me get up. We looked over the edge, and the scooter literally, literally <laughs> fell about 100 feet down, bro. Wow. Literally. Did it break? It was covered in mud. It was. It fell into like a, like a muddy river, okay? The other kids felt so bad that they had like asked each other to do this, like dared each other to do it. They went down into the mud and got the scooter back for me. So it was a real friendship moment, you know what I mean? Wow, but you still got really hurt. Bro, I still almost oof. Now guys, there is a real valuable lesson right there, guys, okay? Now on one hand, you want to be brave, you know, you want to do cool stuff in life, but you also got to know your limits. You got to listen to that inner voice and not do stuff just to impress other people bro because i literally i might not be here today off just a scooter bro yeah that would have been so silly huh that would have been real dumb guys always listen to your inner guide voice don't just do stuff to impress people because you, you might literally oof for no reason i'm gonna be telling you guys a story about why my best friend hated me oh yeah, guys, this is a story of when I was younger. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, I don't hate you. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. We're best buddies. This is about a friend I had when I was younger. It's not about Justin. Oh, it's not about me? Yeah. You had friends? Once a long time ago, oh, I had a few. Okay, okay. Not anymore. Okay, tell us, Adam. Tell okay, us. so this story starts when I was in third grade. Oh. In the third grade, I had a friend named Jake. Me and Jake were super, super close. We played sports together. We were on all the same sports teams and we had a lot of the same hobbies. So we both like Pokemon. We both like video games. We both like stuff like that. Oh, I get it. Basically, I would um, always like carpool with him to like sporting events. So we, we were on the soccer team. We were on the you, baseball team. You ride team. in your mom's minivan. You and Jake in the back. Your mom. 
Exactly. And I'm in the front seat. <laughs> yeah. 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 And sometimes it was actually his dad that would drive me and him to Jake's like. Day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. it would it would like take turns. Like sometimes my mom would drive me and Jake, and sometimes Jake's dad would drive me and Jake. Okay. Okay. So we were really close, guys. Like we we like I said, we liked a lot of the same stuff. We were best best friends. Like. All the time we were hanging out. Well, then why he hates you, then, bro? Well, I'll get into it, man, because it's, uh, cause it's pretty Jake sad. Jake was fake. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You know what I mean? Kind of. Jake was always like really, really cool. He was one of the cooler kids, and his dad would often buy him like some pretty nice stuff. And I remember Jake had one of like the new fancy video game consoles at the time. What? Yeah. So like, like it's like what a PS5 is now, but back then. It, exactly. It would be like if I had like uh like I don't know like some knockoff thing and he got a PS5. Bro. Yeah. It's like oh, you have a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> well, let me play it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So Jake often got a lot of cool stuff, and I remember one time it was. After our baseball game, I was like, hey, um, can Jake come over and spend the night and like hang out? And his dad was like, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Have a sleepover, huh? Yeah, and I was like, hey Jake, like, would you mind bringing your portable video game console over? We can play it all night. And he was like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. He brought it over, he brought over his Pokemon cards, and we were like, oh, we're gonna stay up all night, we're gonna stay up, like, literally no sleep, just play video games. Because I didn't have it, like, it was special to me. Uh, it was a night for the boys. Yeah, it would be like if I let you play my Switch all night. Let me night play Nintendo Switch! <laughs> no, no, no. I wanna play Mario Kart! <laughs> Pokemon Unite! <laughs> So, uh, Jake's dad drops him off at my house. Jake's got, you know, the video game console in hand. Jake's dad, like, you know, be careful. Don't, like, break it while you're here because that was real expensive, right? Yeah. So, Jake's like, yeah, 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 dad. Don't worry, don't worry. So, uh, Jake comes into my room. We set up the thing on the TV or whatever, and we start playing. You know, we got, I think we had pizza that night. It was hey, real yo. good. I don't eat pizza yeah, that much. Yeah, by me. Well, I didn't. I, I didn't think you wanted it. Oh, Sorry. I, I will get you a pizza after I'm done okay, telling the okay, story. Okay. 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 So, uh, and my mom was there, like, she was like, oh, you guys having fun? I was like, yeah, mom, this is great. Like, you should get me one of these. And she, like, laughed and said no. But, yeah, uh, we played all night long. We played for, like, six hours this video game. Uh, super fun. Then the next day came, and it was time for Jake to go home, uh -huh, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So Jake packed up, like, his um, gaming console and all that stuff and all his clothes that he brought and whatnot. His dad picked them up, and then they left. And I didn't hear anything, I, I, and I didn't see him until the next day at school. Okay. So the next day comes and Jake's dad called my mom. His daddy called your mom? Yeah, exactly. Why though? Jake's dad was like, I think Adam stole my son's video game console. Are you serious? Yeah. You stole it? No. Why are you steal, Adam? So here's what happened. What I think happened. Jake accidentally lost his video game console and he tried to blame it on me. I thought you said you saw him pack it up. I did. It's not adding up. But Adam. what Jake told his dad was like, hey, dad, 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 like, I, I, I think I lost my console. Like, Adam's been wanting this a long time. I think he took it. Jake, you blamed gotta, it on you. You got to buy me a new one, dad. Because what I think happened was that Jake, like, might have broken it on accident or, like, lost it. And he's like, I got to get a new one. I'm going to blame it on Adam. Or maybe you did take it. <laughs> or maybe you did take it. No. Just fess up, Adam. I didn't this take it. This was years it. ago. You tell the truth. Justin, I didn't take tell it. Tell the truth. I didn't take it. On the phone with Jake's dad right now. Tell the truth. No, you don't know, Jake. Okay, okay. So you didn't take it. I did not take it, okay, guys. Okay. I think like what I said, what happened was Jake either broke it on his own when he went home or he lost it and he wanted a new one. Bro, and he tried to blame it on you. He's a fake friend, bro. See, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> he tried to blame it on me and so Jake's dad called my mom and my mom's like, Adam, did you steal Jake's video game console? Like, I know you've been wanting one. You asked me for one Yo, last night. So you, everyone, you stole it, bro. everyone is there pointing the finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> they included. Everyone's saying Adam, Adam, Adam did it. And I, I can't like prove my innocence, you know? Cause like, how do I prove I didn't take it? Let him look in your room, bro. Yeah, what would they find in there? Just nothing. A bunch of mail! <laughs> 
So I remember that whole week, I got in so much trouble. Because my mom believed Jake's dad. Like, you know how adults normally trust each but other? But where your mom thought you put the gaming console? She thought that I hid it, like, someplace, like, that she didn't even know about. Your like, own mother don't believe you, bro. Everyone thought because she knew I wanted it, and she said she wouldn't get me one. Wow. No one believed me, guys. I was crying. Wow. And worst of all... I couldn't even trust Jake anymore because wow. he threw me under the bus. So I lost wow. one of my best friends. I remember at school, like, and, and, you know, when we played baseball, like, we were still on the same team and whatnot, like, it was just different. Like, he just, like, ignored me. Like, he wouldn't want to talk to me. All just because he wanted a new game console. Bro, that's messed up, bro. But guess what actually happened? What, bro? What I thought happened was Jake either lost it or he broke it. Now, what I learned was that Jake's dad ended up finding the game console under the seat of the car. <laughs> so what happened was, Jake on his way home, when they were driving back home, he put the game console on the ground and it slid under the seat. <laughs> And so Jake lost it. He thought, oh no, I lost it somewhere else. I don't know where it went. He was like, oh, they'll never find it again. My dad will never find it. I'm just gonna wow. get a new console. Wow. But it was actually his dad, several weeks later, was cleaning out his car and he's like, wait, Jake, the game console's right here. Jake is fake, bro. You told me you lost this. I bought you a new one already. He did? Yeah. Bro. And so Jake got in a ton of trouble and I actually lost my best friend because I can't trust him anymore. Nah. Yeah. You, you can't, you don't know who to trust, bro. But Who's the one person one? who did apologize to me was my mom. Cause she was like, I'm sorry I blamed you for that. Like it, it made sense in my head, like why you why you would take it. But Jake's dad told her like, hey, you know, actually my son was the bad boy. He's the bad boy. I'm calling your mom right now. Hey, <laughs> that was a real good thing you did, forgiving Adam. Yeah. I wouldn't trust him either, but I, I understand. Yeah. Okay, bye. Dude, and that's, that's crazy. That was pretty much it, guys. Like, at school, Were you like, and Jake friends after that? No. I literally lost my best friend because of that. Like, we never hung out again. When we were on, like, the same sports teams, like, we didn't carpool anymore. Like, we didn't want to, like, play with each other. Like, we barely spoke after that. That's messed up. That's his fault, bro. Yeah. Because he tried to pin it on you, bro. And he got in trouble with his dad because he lied to his dad. Man, his daddy. That is crazy, man. Yeah, and that's how I lost my best friend, and I hope that I never have to have that happen with you. Our terrible haircut experiences. <laughs> now, I've had some pretty bad haircuts in my life, have you? I mean, I've had some crazy ones. Now, this story starts when I was in sixth grade. Oh, man. Now, you need to understand. <laughs> At this point in my life, sixth grade is the year when you go from a fifth grader elementary school yeah. baby stuff yeah. to sixth grade middle school. Yeah, you the did. older kids, yeah. there's girls, you're starting to mature a bit. Now, when I was in fifth grade, I was pretty boring. I kind of oh, looked yeah. like a nerd. So I was like, you know what? Sixth grade, first day of school, I want to roll in there looking like an actual bad oh, boy. Oh, like a baller. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to some rock music. Oh. You know, I might have listened to music. some Red Velvet bad boy. Uh, I wanted to be a bad boy. I, okay. So I started wearing like some black clothes that had like broken hearts on it. Like I wanted to be like an edgy teen. <laughs> you wore a t-shirt with a broken heart on it? Yeah. I was like an e-boy even back then. Whose hearts were you breaking? <laughs> uh, only one. <laughs> Your mom's. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I had this idea in my mind where fifth grade, I was a nerd. I didn't have any girlfriends, obviously. Sixth grade, True. I'm a new me. I'm going to reinvent myself. Uh, yeah. I'm going to walk in on the first day of school and just be that cool dude that sits uh, in the yeah. back. Just all edgy, all the girls looking just, at me like, just wow. Just big on TikTok with yeah. the E-Boys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it was the summer going into sixth grade. I was like, I'm going to grow my hair out. Oh. And then right before <laughs> school starts, I'm going to get my hair cut in like a really cool like bad boy way. Where What's it's like up, jagged boy? and like kind of long. What Jagged? Like some bangs in the front, like covering one of my eyes. Like oh. that type of stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna look cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, so back in elementary school, my mom cut all my hair because we just wanted to save money and it's like, why does it matter? That's I'll just smart, cut your hair, yeah, right? smart, yeah. So she would always sit me down in the kitchen, put me in a chair, cut my hair the same way. It was always like really dirty. True. So this time I was like, mom, you need to understand, this is not the normal routine. I want to cut my hair to look like a bad boy. 
So she's like, oh, I got you. <laughs> you pulled out, you pulled out this, the phone. You pulled out TikTok. That's <laughs> up, e boy. I'm gonna look like them. She said, I'm, that's not possible. You better uninstall that app. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I had this idea in my mind because on the first day of school is also picture day. Uh -huh. So I was like, dude, I gotta look fresh for these pictures. Yeah. So I'm like, mom, school starts in a couple days. I need you to give me a haircut. I want to have this cool like bangs with the jagged edges. Dude, and, like, like I, I, okay, I'll put a pause. Your relationship with your mom is so interesting. Like, you just boss her around. <laughs> what is this? You're like, no. Mom, it's your first day at school and you look super cool. No. You're gonna cut this way she or was else. Like, she was like pumped. She was like, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you look so cool. Like, I promise. Yeah. We were like pumping each other up. Oh yeah. Now we don't have a mirror in my kitchen where she cuts my hair, <laughs> so I can't see what's going on. My mom starts to cut my hair. I'm like, okay, remember mom, like, remember what I told you? She's like, Adam, don't worry, I got this. Now, she starts to cut, whatever, like she uses the razor, cuts it on nice and short, kind of goes around, I'm like, it doesn't really feel like... I don't feel like an e-boy yet! But maybe, maybe this is like part of the process. <laughs> my mom been cutting my hair for two minutes! My TikTok DMs are still empty! Why? And I remember she literally took the razor, like the electric razor, and just went completely in a circle around my head. What? I was like... I Why? guess this is gonna lead to the bad boy look. I don't know like and so she went in a complete circle and she was like, okay I'm done. I was like, what? <laughs> and I, I, I could only feel it. I was like, it feels kind of weird. Wait, wait, but... wait, wait. She went around like this? Yeah, like a perfect circle. That doesn't make any sense. It's like a bowl cut. <laughs> I'm like, alright, I guess it's the new me. Like I gotta go see what this looks like. Yeah. And I remember so clearly I walked to the bathroom the light was turned off. I kind of was like, okay, mentally ready. Like, oh, this is the new me. Walk into the bathroom, turn on the light, yeah. look in the mirror. Yeah. I literally started crying. <laughs> literally. I screamed. Why? Because I look so ugly. Dude, that wasn't the haircut. <laughs> Dude, no. I literally look like the biggest square of all time. Just Why? such a nerd. Why are you gonna put your mom on blast? See, dude, you literally so salty about this haircut. You've been waiting 10 years <laughs> to tell this story. Dude, I literally had the outfit on point. It was all black. It had hearts and tears and angels on it. I was like, dude, I need to look like a bad boy. And it was just not right. <laughs> I just look like, like just a nerd. <laughs> okay, and that's okay. basically it. That was the worst haircut of my life. Okay, that actually kind of ties into my haircut story. Now, funny enough, Adam, now this is not scripted. I actually went through a very similar phase. I feel like a lot of people go through this kind of phase where they try to be like a bad boy, you know uh -huh. what I mean? I was listening to a lot of heavy music. I was dressing in like a bunch of dark colors, you know, real moody. Yeah, so you know, I was like 13-ish. I was listening to edgy music. I was watching lots of anime. I said, <laughs> I want to look like one of these guys, okay? In the anime? Yeah, in the anime, you already know. So, I decided. I was like, I have to get attention from like people to make friends and also girls somehow. Mm -hmm. I said, I gotta be different. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, hold up. What did your hair look like up until this point? I basically always had it like very short, like almost like a buzz cut. Just like really boring. Really simple. Gotcha. Really plain and simple. Uh huh. I said, I gotta glow up. <laughs> I decided I'm gonna grow my hair as long as possible. Now you, I, I actually don't think that you ever knew me at this point, I used to have hair down to my shoulders. What is that? <laughs> what is that face? I'm just trying to imagine what that would look like. Dude, it was actually Wait, really wait, wait. Intense. Would you do the thing where you go like this? Yeah, okay, that's part of the story. Really? That's actually part of the story. Dude. So, dude, every part, like, you have to understand for guys, there's a certain threshold <laughs> when you grow your hair out. It gets to a certain point where it gets in your eyes, and then you have to go like this. You gotta flip it like all Justin Bieber used Dude, to do. All the time, okay? I literally, part of this story was I started to develop neck pain <laughs> because I was going like this. Like 400. It still hurts now. People just think you're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Growing your hair out is such a process. It probably took me like like a year, almost two years, and it got down to my shoulder. 
Uh -huh. Okay, now at that level, you gotta do, you not only have to swish, you have to do a lot of maintenance, you know, use a lot of products, uh -huh. you know, it was a very hard thing to take care of. As the hair grows out, you know, it enters like the danger zone. Wait, and was it worth it though? Like, were you getting more attention from girls the longer and longer your hair Dude, got? I actually kind of was, but it not, it wasn't necessarily like good attention. It was just like, wow, he's very different, <laughs> kind of looks a little bit weird. <laughs> he always looks like he just got out of bed, uh -huh. basically. The long hair was cool, but there were some major problems. The maintenance is really tough, okay? Uh, you had to do this thing a lot, okay? And also, like, when it was summer, it would get super hot. And then I would end up super sweaty. You uh -huh. know what that's like, okay? That's not fun. And then, I was actually... Like in high school, I was a swimmer, right? I was on the swim team, so we'd have morning practices. Uh -huh. And then you, I, I, this one day changed my whole life. I basically, I got out of the pool and my hair was still wet, right? It was still wet. I was walking to class. Okay, this was during the winter. And my hair had literally frozen. Dude. Dude, it froze because it was so long. Wait, so you just had like icicles for hair? I, dude, it literally froze because it was so long. Like when your hair is shorter, it's like, I don't know, it's like closer to your head so it's warmer so it doesn't freeze. When it's really long, it froze and then a piece of it chipped off. Wait, what? That's not a joke. It actually just broke off. Does that happen to like girls with long hair? I don't know, but it happened to me. That was the turning point where I said no more. Dude, that's dangerous. It was bad. Okay, I basically threw an icicle when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided at that point, I said, no more, it's over. And I went home and I bought a razor. I bought an electric shaver that same day and I buzzed my entire head. Two years of growing hair out down the drain. So, you know, on the bright side, the maintenance was better. My neck pain got a little bit better. Uh -huh. My hair was not snapping off anymore. But there is one big negative to when Justy has very short hair. What? I basically look like I'm a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna be talking about our craziest, cringiest school dance stories. Now, I know Adam, of course, is the king of school dances, so you know. I thought we you were going to say the king of cringe. That which too, is also true. That too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to get to that story in a minute, but for now, I'm going to tell you about one time. I literally got knocked out from how cringy a school dance was. <laughs> okay. It was crazy. Now, this story takes place in freshman year of high school, uh -huh. so you know, I was trying to be a little bit cooler at that point. Now, mm -hmm. in my previous stories, I said middle school Justy just didn't go to school dance. I said, that's not for me. Well, in high school, you know, I wanted to make some friends. You know, I started thinking about, okay, how am I gonna get seen by the ladies? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Okay. okay. I was in high school and there was a dance coming up, which when you really think about school dances, the whole premise, even in high school, is a little bit cringe because even at like a prom or whatever, there's like chaperones, uh -huh. which are like your teachers. Like think about how cringe that is. Like they see you like dancing like hey. And one of the parents is over here. And then you have, you have to see those people the next day <laughs> at school. <laughs> like, that's great. <laughs> I've been to a few dances. <laughs> I was getting known, you know, in the scene, okay? And I had started to come up with a plan, you know, because there were certain things I noticed about school dances, okay? The first thing, the big thing, is that all the kids basically end up coalescing into like a circle, like a dance circle. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And then there's always that one moment that I really did not like where the kids throw you in the middle of the dance circle. Uh -huh. And then suddenly there's like 200 kids watching And you. there's all this pressure to like do some sick dance move. That's what I mean. And you know, I mean, Adam apparently is a dance legend. So he probably looked good in the middle of that circle. Me, on the other hand, I hated being in the middle of that circle. That's like my worst fear. Uh -huh. Because then everybody's staring at me. I don't know how to dance. Right. You know what I mean? Unless I go like, <laughs> which I had not yet learned that move. I was there. I was like, I don't want to look like an idiot in front of all these people, in front of all the ladies, okay, and all the teachers. Because they're going to see me the next day and be like, this kid's an idiot, uh -huh. okay? So I decided I had a friend back then named Carly. Now, Carly is a very short, very feisty person, okay? She was like very energetic and she was very, very popular at school. So I was like, I got an idea. 
because me and Carly were kind of friends. I said, I went up to her, I said, Carly, at the next dance, if I get pushed in the middle of the dance circle, I'm going to do some cool move where I point to you. Damn. I point to you and you're going to join me in the dance circle. So I was like, you know, I was prepared. So you had like a backup plan. I had a backup plan. Like if she joins me, everyone will watch Carly because she's pretty and fun and good at dancing. And I'll just kind of stand there and do this. Uh huh. Okay, so I'll get, so I'll remove myself from the cringe situation. So the big day shows up. Okay, it's the next dance. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I'm looking good. You know, the ladies be rolling up on me, you know. So we're in the dance circle. Uh -huh. Everybody's getting into the circle together. We're all dancing. And you know, hey, <laughs> and then the big moment comes. So there's the dance circle. There's people in the middle who are actually good at dancing. I'm uh -huh. like, oh, bruh, I can't compete here. But then I feel it. I feel the hand on my back pushing me in. Ah! Suddenly, there's 200 people. The beat's going, uh, 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 uh. And I am there alone in the middle of the dance circle. I'm thinking, I gotta act quick. I do my move, I find Carly, I point to her, I say, come on in. And then the crowd's like, oh, because it's like two people in the middle now, uh -huh. okay? Now, Carly, when I said that she was short and feisty earlier, I think the only way to describe Carly accurately is a firecracker. She's like an actual explosive, okay? Uh -huh. She gets in the middle and starts doing a dance I've never seen before. <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> it was a little bit scary, but the crowd's like, oh, oh, oh. Everybody's freaking out. We're looking good and then out of nowhere i cannot make this up this really happened carly hits me with one of these and elbow connects straight with my forehead I, <laughs> I was knocked out cold i just slept over <laughs> and next thing i knew i woke up i was on the sidelines of the dance i had an ice pack on my head and I was sat next to all the teachers. They said, Justin, you're not allowed back on the dance floor. You gotta sit with us till you heal. Wait, what, what, did Carly like feel bad? I don't really know. I never really talked to her after that. I got knocked out in the middle of a dance circle. Wait, but did it end up looking like really cool? Like people were like, dude, that's oh, crazy. Yeah. He literally danced oh, so yeah. hard he got knocked out. <laughs> or people just like cringy. I don't really know what people thought, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was pretty cringe uh -huh. because I literally got knocked out <laughs> by the cringe. Now, that kind of leads into my story. Now, basically, my story involves a school dance, but it doesn't actually involve the dance. It involves the leading up to the dance. Okay. The asking of someone out. I was, I believe, in 10th grade, and huh. there was a girl who I was just friends with named Emma. Okay. Now, at this time, I wasn't dating anyone. I actually didn't even have a crush on anyone. Like, there was no one I liked. And so, this Why you say it like that? What? Oh, you know, at the time, I was single, you know. <laughs> you always single. <laughs> what you mean, at the time? <laughs> and so, I had this really good friend at the time named Emma. And we've been friends since, like, middle school. Like, we were always just, like, really close. But we never, like, found each other attractive or anything. Like, we never caught feelings. We were just actually friends. Uh -huh. Now, Emma didn't have a date to the dance. And I didn't like anyone that I was gonna ask so I was like oh I could just ask Emma and we'll just go as friends yeah now there's basically a few very popular ways to ask a girl out to a dance Naturally. like ranging from like the lamest to the coolest on the lame end you have like texting her like Facebook messaging her whatever in the middle you got like holding up a sign being like you want to go to prom with me but on the cool side you got like the crazy ideas and I was like I got nothing to lose. Like, she's gonna say yes because we're homies. Like, I might as well just go for the crazy no, option. No, why would you do a crazy option to ask a friend to a dance? <laughs> because I thought it'd be cool. That, no, that works. It's like practice. I was watching some romantic movies. I was like, I gotta do something like this. Now, I had this great idea. Now, have you ever seen that really, like, cliche scene in the movie where the guy, like, holds a boombox over his head yeah. and plays music yeah. and, like, asks a girl out? Yeah. I was like, I want to do something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I had it in my plan where I was gonna go to her house at night and like play some crazy loud romantic music and ask her to the dance. So that was my plan, right? The day comes. Yeah. It's like 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm like, all right, here we go. I got some flowers in my passenger seat. I'm driving to her place. Uh -huh. I'm like, okay, what song should I play? Okay, what should I say? This is gonna be awesome. Yeah. I pull up to her house, load up my, my song on my iPod, connect it. 
start to turn up the music real loud. Some like romantic piano music. What was the song? Do you remember? I think I just typed into YouTube like romantic song <laughs> and then I just pressed the first one. Wow, you really put a lot of, <laughs> lot of thought into this one. <laughs> well, what music should I play? You should play that song a thousand miles. <laughs> you know, by Vanessa Carlton. <laughs> yeah. That would have been a good idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and literally, it was like perfect timing. Like it started to rain. Just like in those romantic movies. I was like, oh, no. this time it's perfect. Just like in the horror movies. <laughs> what you mean? So I get out of the car. It's raining. I got the music blasting. So I have a sign. I go up to her house. I'm like, Emma! Because I was going to call her out and like she would see me in the window. I was like, Emma, will you go to prom with me? <laughs> and then it was like a couple minutes went by. I was like, <laughs> Emma, will you go to prom with me? Like the song was already over. It's on to the next one. And eventually, like, her mom came to the front door, and she was like, Oh, hi, Adam. Uh, Emma's actually not home right now. <laughs> I think she had, like, volleyball practice or something. <laughs> but she was like, yeah, she should be home in, like, ten minutes. Do you want to, like, redo it? I was like, okay. <laughs> redo, redo. <laughs> I was swinging a miss. It wasn't actually that cringe. I was like, uh... Okay. She's like, yeah, she'll be home in like maybe a little bit. Like, do you want to like come inside? Cause it's pretty cold outside. I was like, uh, I'll just play in my car. <laughs> Eventually, Emma does come home. Like, I kind of like drove around the corner so she wouldn't see me. Uh, I ended up doing the exact same thing again. I turned up the music. I was like, Emma, and she did end up saying yes. Like, it went well. But there was a 10 minute span there where she was just <laughs> not there and I was just sitting in my car. <laughs> and I was just, is this the most cringy thing I've ever done? Dude, there was a 10 minute span where you were in your car and you were like, Emma's not here. Maybe I'll just ask her mom. <laughs>